Hi, my name is John Stifferman. I'm the creator of physicalliving.com. And in this video, I'm going to teach you how to refine your front elbow plank technique. Now, there's a lot more than meets the eye with what would appear to be a very simple exercise. Truth is that there's some subtle nuances to the front elbow plank you should probably be aware of. Now, if you're a, a beginner who's brand new to this exercise, this probably isn't the best instructional video for you. Um, this is more for people who are intermediate or advanced. You know, you should be able to hold a plank for at least a minute. Um, without too much fatigue before you start looking at all the nitty gritty details of optimal technique. Um, there's a lot of things that go into making a plank as efficient as possible. And you know, you might want to just start by you know, looking at a picture and, and trying to model this until you can hold it for a minute. And once you can hold it for a minute, come back and start thinking about integrating all these components to make it more efficient. And that's what this video is all about. It's about refining your technique so you're performing a plank as optimally as possible so that you can get as much uh, benefit out of it as possible. And so that your performances improve, your times improve, and so that you can be doing planks for longer and attempting more advanced variations of these stabilization exercises. So if you've never done planks in this way before, it's probably gonna be significantly harder than what you're used to. That's just because it's a new exercise with a learning curve and everything's awkward the first time, that's okay. So you know, let's say you've been able to hold a plank for a minute you might have to drop down to 30 seconds or so. You know, you're know, you gonna have to decrease your performance um, out of necessity just because doing planks in this way is gonna be harder initially, but over the, long run, over the long run, the most efficient technique is gonna be the one that you can see the greatest uh, increase in performance. Um, so practicing with a, a foundation of good technique is the, it's, it's really the only way to mastery over an exercise, even an exercise as simple or seemingly as simple as the front elbow plank. So, several components that go into it. I'm going to walk you through one by one. Please follow along so you can internalize them. And here we go. All right, the first component of an efficient elbow plank is arm positioning. Most important thing is that you want your elbows placed directly underneath your shoulder. It's really silly to say that you need to have them three to six inches apart or any unit of measurement because Everybody has different shoulder width. Everybody has a different body type. You want to work with your body type instead of against it. So working with it means putting your elbows directly underneath your shoulders. Not too far in, which is a common mistake. Puts a little extra strain on your shoulder joint, which is going to fatigue you prematurely and over time could even lead to an injury. You want your shoulders or your elbows directly underneath your shoulders. And what that means is, you know, if you imagine the bone in the center of your arm here, it's running straight down. Wherever that bone is pointing towards, that's where you want the bulk of your weight. So you want, you want most of your weight to be distributed right underneath your elbow. Not on the tip of your elbow, but underneath where that bone is, is resting, is, is pointing. Um, so that's the first important thing when it comes to arm positioning. Um, secondly, uh, your arms might, might want to come in a little bit, and that's okay, your forearms here. That's okay for some people. Basically, um, you want to find a place that's comfortable for you. Some people have internally rotated shoulders, so their arms are more comfortable um, right here. And until you work out that uh, uh, alignment issue, this might be the best place for them. But find a place that's comfortable. You know, if you rotate your arms out really far, you'll notice that there's a little bit of strain on your elbow joint. And that's what you want to avoid when you're working in this range here. So find a place that's comfortable. If you go too far, if you rotate too far in, then you might find the same problem. You might not notice it right away, but after 30 seconds or a minute, you might notice a little bit of strain on your elbow and shoulder because of that. So elbows directly underneath shoulders, most of your weight distributed directly underneath the elbow, and arms in a comfortable position. Now, the next thing that's important is that you want to avoid distributing your weight forward onto your forearms and, and hands here. You know, it's another common mistake to flex the elbow in tight into your ribs and putting a lot more weight on your forearms instead of just on your elbows. That's going to fatigue your triceps prematurely and you're not going to be able to hold the plank for as long. So that's really important. Um, you know, think of the skyscraper analogy. My, your, your joints need to be stacked on top of each other in order for it to be efficient. That's, that's really important. So once you have the arm positioning in place, you want to connect that to your core. You know, basically we're we're turning this exercise into a full body exercise instead of just a core strengthening exercise so you can get as much benefit out of it as possible. We connect this structure of the arms with your core by 
packing your shoulders down into your rib cage. If you allow your shoulders to shrug up in this position, then you're going to fatigue very quickly. You need to pull those shoulders down, pack them on your rib cage so that you're building this solid structure. You're connecting your arms into your core with shoulder pack. And you do that just by driving your shoulders straight down. If you want to practice, if you've never done shoulder pack before, you just hold your, hold your arms at length and pull your shoulders down, reaching your fingertips down on the outsides of your thighs towards the outsides of your knees. And you want to model that with your elbows up. It might be a little bit um, challenging for you at first if you've never done it before, but it's really important. Over the long run, you'll become a lot more efficient if you practice it this way. So you do that just in the plank position. After you have your arm positioning in place, pull the shoulders down onto your ribcage and, and try to avoid flexing your elbows at the same time, which you will be tempted to do. But we'll get into a, a strategy for avoiding that in a minute. Once you have arm positioning and shoulder pack down, you want to start thinking about your spinal alignment. Basically, you want to avoid um, anything but a neutral spine. So you want to avoid craning your neck back to look at a, a clock on the wall. You want to avoid a rounded upper back or lower back or your butt way too high in the ground. You want this fairly neutral spine that is lengthening in both directions. So I'm lengthening with my crown in one direction and reaching with my tailbone in the other direction. So if you imagine your spine like a string of pearls, it's lengthening in both directions. That's a neutral spine. That's what we want to go for. We want to avoid any permutation of spinal alignment. A long spine is a strong spine. That's really important. Once you have the spinal alignment down, you want to be thinking about um, a combination of core activation with hip recruitment. What that means is activating these muscles in your core, musculature, your abs, your obliques, and, and timing that in combination with a powerful glute contraction. You don't need to be doing an all-out effort with either of these. You just want to be activating the muscles to tie everything together so that there isn't a, a section of your body that is just completely relaxed. I mean, you want to you want to relax everything that is not necessary um, to complete the exercise. But in in the elbow plank, these are the muscles that are, are really the prime movers. Your your glute muscles and in this exercise, your abs. These are what we're primarily working. So you want to contract these a little bit, contract your glutes a little bit, which is going to uh, rotate your pelvis underneath a little bit. This little bit of a tailbone tuck, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but it's going to look like this when you're in the front elbow plank. So you contract your abs, contract your glutes, and, and that's basically what it looks like. And that's, if you've never done that in a plank before, it's probably going to make it uh, significantly harder than what you're used to. A lot of people just try to balance on four limbs when they're in the plank. They're, they're not used to making this into a stabilization exercise. It's just a, how long can I, how long can I survive here instead of how much work can I do here um, in as much time as possible. So you have arm positioning, you have shoulder pack, you have the spinal alignment, the spine lengthening in two directions. You have that abdominal contraction with the, the co-contraction of the glute muscles that tucks the tailbone underneath slightly. After that, you want to start thinking about leg drive. And you want to balance your leg drive um, with uh, the weight distribution 50% on your arms and 50% on your legs. So you don't want to be too far forward on your arms because you're going to fatigue, obviously. You don't want to be too far back on your legs. And if you've got all these components in place already, then you're going to avoid that. But now is the time when you start thinking about 50% of my weight on my arms, 50% of my weight on my legs. But leg drive isn't just about balancing, like I said, you're distributing your weight, you're distributing your, your uh, force production. And with leg drive, you're contracting your quad muscles, which, you know, these muscles on the fronts of your thighs here, and that extends your knees, locks your knees out, and drives your heels backwards with that contraction. And that's leg drive, and you're balancing on your ball of foot. Now, yeah. If you've never done planks in this way before, this last part is probably going to be the trickiest. But this is, this is where you tie it all together. This is where you truly make it into a full body exercise. You're basically turning uh, your body into an arch, just like an architecture. And so your arms are pushing in one direction and your legs are pushing in the opposite direction. So essentially you're pushing your body together to keep your core supported. Now, you know, what does that look like? It, it's hard to 
demonstrate visually what this looks like, but if you imagine that I was on ice, now I'm on a very slippery, very slippery surface, the pressure that I'm exerting with my arms is forward. So if I was on ice, my arms would slide forward because I'm pushing this way with my elbow. Same thing with my feet. If I'm on ice, I'm pushing backwards to counterbalance that, that force production of my arms. So my feet would slide back behind me. So it's that, that co-force uh, production that holds the body together, holds it up. And um, as you get more advanced, if you want to add more weight, that's what you're going to need to do to support um, your lower back. And if you're having trouble getting this, you can put a, you can put a small weight, any small weight plate on your lower back. And you're going to notice more how you have to um, push in both different directions to keep that weight up. So those are all the components of the front elbow plank. Again, arm positioning, shoulder pack, uh, lengthening your spine core activation with that glute contraction to tuck the tailbone underneath, and then leg drive. And using that leg drive to, to counterbalance with the drive of your arms. Your arms are driving forwards, pushing your body backwards, and your legs are driving backwards to push your body forwards and, and basically support your body like an arch. So if you integrate all of these different components into the front elbow plank, you're going to get a lot more benefit out of it and be able to increase your performance far beyond what you could have done if you omitted any one of these. And each one of these is important. Um, they all work towards the whole of the front elbow plank exercise. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you learned something. Please try it out and let me know how you do. And take care.